Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Catholic Talk Show. We got a great show for you today. We're going to be talking about Fat Tuesday, Ash Wednesday, and the liturgical season of Lent. Yeah, we're going to talk about all the great foods that we get to eat on Fat Tuesday, how we get to gorge on them. Then we're going to talk about the penitential day tomorrow with Ash Wednesday and the ashes. We're going to talk about what Catholics have to do during Lent and the rules that surround that. And we're going to talk about the really cool medieval tradition of a 40-day beer-only fast during Lent. Mm. Oh, wow. Now, now, I've got to say that the only beads that matter to me today are these beads. The but I probably beads. will get fat because <laughs> it's Fat Tuesday. All right, guys, man, it's really awesome to be back in the studio with you this Fat Tuesday. Yeah, it's a fun day. It is yeah, a great day. Man. I've always enjoyed Fat Tuesday. I've never been to Mardi Gras in, in uh, have you been to New Orleans at all? I have. You have been? I have, yeah. Oh, no way. As a kid. Oh, cool. I still have like a uh, pillowcase full of doubloons and beads. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. It we just actually, seems like an awesome parade and party and celebration and so cultural. Even as a kid, I had the sense that it was pretty wild. Yeah. 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 Yeah, Fat Tuesday, man. Fat what are Tuesday. you guys? What are you guys fattening up on? You know, I'm definitely going to be celebrating with some of my brothers, my seminarian brothers, and my priest brothers. You know, we're gonna have a good time. There you go. You have some beer and put some music on. I'm I'm into like the jazz feel of like New Orleans and you know getting some jazz going. The second tonight. line. Yeah, man. Nice. It'll be fun. It'll be How fun about night. You? Well, what I'm doing for Fat Tuesday is I'm making this show. And that's oh. what we're going to do. <laughs> so now before we get into the episode. He's got, quite plan He's got some plans. I do. Movie. And we're going to turn He's it up working. here. So we're going to get into 11 in here because it's Fat Tuesday. And tomorrow is Lent starting. And it's going to be all solemn ash cloths and fasting and abstinence. So I want to live it up today. So let's have fun today in preparation <laughs> for Get it out of the system. Lent. Now. Now, before we start uh, tearing it up and throwing beads into balloons <laughs> and things start getting wild in here and we start going full Mardi Gras. Ah! <laughs> I want to make sure that everyone goes to catholictalkshow.com. There you can subscribe to us on Facebook, on uh, YouTube and iTunes and all the podcasting services. And you can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And uh, if you got the time, make sure, uh, throw a couple extra doubloons our way by going to patreon.com forward slash the Catholic Talk Show. There you can help support the production of the show, make sure that we can continue doing these shows and that we have something to tide us over in these next 40 days of fasting. Uh, we really appreciate it if you do. Pay for our, our beer fast. Yeah, pay it's for our 40 fast. day beer no, fast. Yeah, 40 day that. beer only. <laughs> yeah. Beer only. That fast is, is uh, that's fantastic. You can lose some brain cells there, yeah. couldn't you? <laughs> no, well, maybe, probably. <laughs> yes, definitely. <laughs> yes, definitely. <laughs> so today's Fat Tuesday. And this is a pretty cool and pretty unique and very, very culturally Catholic day. A lot of Catholic holidays have become secularized. Um, they get turned into something that really loses the the intentional meaning and the intentional way that a holiday was celebrated when they get turned into a secular holiday. But I think Fat Tuesday kind of has come out largely unscathed in the way that it's celebrated when it's been transferred to the popular culture. It is a day where everyone really enjoys the mirth and the goodness of everything before, um, before we get into the liturgical season of Lent, where we really start to uh, become penitent and, and, and look to amend our lives in preparation for Easter. Fat Tuesday is a fun day. Now, I think throughout, you know, it's called Mardi Gras. Now, Mardi Gras is a French word, and Mardi Gras really kind of emanates from the Big Easy, from New Orleans, right? And New Orleans is a very distinct state in the Union because it really was founded by the French. And there's a very deep French Catholic um, identity, identity there. Yeah. I mean, they're the only state it's visible that, everywhere you go. I mean, the it's counties still are visible. called parishes. Yeah, you know? yeah, because that that comes from the French parishes. Right. I mean, they don't have counties; they have parishes. Their football team's the Saints. They got the Florida Lee. It's a, it's yeah. a very beautiful French Creole culture that really maintains a lot of that Catholic character. Uh, so they call it Mardi Gras, and that's where that celebration really emanates in the United States from. And Mardi Gras is just the French way of saying. Fat Tuesday, Mardi being Tuesday, Gras being yeah. fat, like like uh, foie awesome. gras, which is yeah. the the fat of the goose, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's Fat Delicious. Tuesday. It is. 
Now, I've had it on a burger once. Mm-hmm. Have you really? Yeah. One of the best things I've eaten is, is foie gras, but you can't find it anymore because it's really viewed as a very cruel way to treat the animal. You have to, you yeah. have to deliver foie gras. You got to whisper it. Foie gras. Foie gras. From Mardi Gras. Maybe we should do that for Mardi Gras. Some foie gras. That'd be cool. That's fat. Yeah. yeah. PH. Fat. P- yeah. <laughs> like Lil' Kim. Pretty hot and tempting. Yeah. So why is it called Fat Tuesday? Well, traditionally, everyone knows that tomorrow, Ash Wednesday, we're going into the season where we are starting to get into a period of abstinence and penance. Now, in the centuries past, Lent was much more stridently observed, and people would not have some of the the more rich foods that you would normally have in any other time of year. So everyone would try to use up all the fat and the sugars in their house. So any of your, you know, your salted mm. pork, or so whatever the, whatever the fats that weren't going <laughs> to last for 40 days, you wanted to eat them up on this day because you're not going to eat them for the next 40 days and you don't want to be wasteful. So you eat all your good stuff and then go into Lent. So that's why you see a lot of the, um, the, the traditionally, Fat Tuesday things that we eat, like king cake, punchkis, pancakes. You're using up the fats and the butters and the sugars, and you're using those all up so that they're not going to waste during Lent. And everyone kind of, hey, this is the last day. Let's live it up. Mm-hmm. That's why. That's why it's known as Fat Tuesday. I knew that. <laughs> wow. <Well, laughs> of course you did. Of course you did. <laughs> I knew that. Of course. Now, leading Ryan Delacroix, I knew it. Yeah. Now, leading up. Now, you've heard that in a lot of countries, um, leading up to it's called Carnival, right? Yep. Do you know where that word comes from? Carni, right? Vale. Which means carni is meat. <laughs> meat. <laughs> carne. Um, but so, carnies. Carni. Yeah, it's carnies. Yeah, yeah. carnies, bro. It comes from carnies, I of course. Think about Ferris wheels and <laughs> dude, uh, the uh, ring I'm, of fire. I've met some shady carnies in my life, man. Well, carnival comes from the two Latin words carne for meat and lavar, which means remove, to remove meat. So the festival yeah. of carnival means we're leading up to the point in time where we're removing meat from our diets uh, in, in accordance with Lent. Which now that I don't think a lot of people do know that carnival just means getting rid of meat. Well, now to do away away with meat. When I see the carnival cruise lines, I'm like, I'm not going. I'm not going on that. There's no meat on that. I'm not going on your vegan cruise. (laughs) Pass. Sorry. (laughs) I'm going on carne cruise lines. (laughs) Guys, I went on a family reunion cruise. It was the first cruise of my life. I think it's my last cruise. Oh, no. What happened? They're rough. I was just sick the whole time. The food wasn't that great. It was just the not beds a, are terrible. The beds, yeah. I mean, it may have just been the boat. The boat was pretty. Odd. I mean, there was like a seventeen-year-old. Probably hasn't been renovated in probably seventeen years. Yeah, it was the SS but, floating garbage can. <laughs> 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 but just definitely not my style. Feel like kind of claustrophobic. Mm-hmm. You know, it was known I'm there the, with you. It was known as the trash queen of the sea. Carnival. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Uh, now the, actually the best bed I've ever slept on, I think was on a cruise. So oh, really, yeah, yeah. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll have my guy t- call your guy and we'll get you on a good I'm cruise. good, man. I'm good. <sighs> so yeah, everyone around the world today and at least who have been influenced by Catholic cultures are partying it up, but that's because tomorrow is Ash Wednesday. Yes. Yeah. Let's see if some of our listeners can do a little thing and tell us what they're doing today. Yeah. I'm kind of curious. Yeah. I want to yeah. learn more about what people do for, for Fat Tuesday. Yeah. Some I want to know. Now, I want to know. This I is want what, ideas. I want to know, but here's what I want to know is who, what is the king? What is the, what is the, what is the best Fat Tuesday food? Is it punchkis that come from the Polish tradition or is it king cake that come from the French tradition? I like the king cake, but oh, I, no. know, I don't think I've had a punchki before. Oh, I don't think I've ever I like had saying a punchki. It, though, though, yeah. Punchki. Uh, punchki. 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 You know? Like, no, on Fat Tuesday <laughs> in our house, do. And on fat, the punchkis are like a kind of kind of like a massively glorified donut, right? Mm. With powdered sugar. Mm. In my house, we all look like Tony Montana. We're just covered in powder. <laughs> we look like we just stuck our face in a big bowl of powder. <laughs> powder bowl. Sugar. Yeah, we look like uh, we look like Ashy Larry on that day, just covered <laughs> in powder. But yeah, poonchkis are, that's it for me. I, I prefer poonchkis really? over king cake. King yeah. cake's kind of boring. Yeah, I've only had king cake. I think you know, I'm not, good. And I'm French. I'm not Polish. Mm. And I prefer the Polish food. We had a bakery outside of our house when we lived in D.C. They made the best king cake, man. Oh. They were they were gone in like 
Yeah. Like mm-hmm. the first hour of the morning, a hundred of them out of there. Did you get the baby inside of it? The, the uh, Roy? Yeah, I chipped my tooth on it once. <laughs> <laughs> that means you're going to get married in the next year. I, think. Oh, I don't know. Wow, that's not good. <laughs> don't tell Jen. <laughs> don't tell Jen. <laughs> oh, God. So, yeah, like Fat Tuesday is a wonderful time to, to celebrate and really to amp up for, you know, this entering into a season of penance, you know, yeah. prayer, penance, and almsgiving. Yeah, the season of Lent begins with Ash Wednesday. And this is the sprinkling rite that is offered to all people, not just Catholics. And is there's that, Yeah, is that true? It is true. And this is a celebration that we should be inviting our friends to. And culturally speaking, I can't tell you how many people go to that liturgy, especially of, of Hispanic cultures. Yeah. And, and, the, and that's the only thing it's they do so all year. Popular. Yeah. They don't even go to Christmas or Easter. Yeah. There's people that just, just go yeah. to Ash Wednesday and that's it. It's Ash bizarre. Wednesday is so packed. I bet you it has a greater population of attendance than, you know, it's got to be up there with Christmas. And it's not even a holy day of obligation. It's not even a holy day of obligation. That's the funny thing. But people want their ashes. Because it symbolizes something so powerful. And when we think ashes to ashes, dust to dust, that the one's mortality comes into into focus. But there's another aspect of penance. You know, when when David offended God, what are we doing? He's rolling in the (laughs) dust, you know, like he covered himself with it. And and that type of an experience. He looked like pig pen from uh, Peanuts. (laughs) (laughs) Do a cartoon rendition. That was the best character. Oh, dude, I love that guy. In any cartoon. My mom, my mom liked him, too. My mom oh. loves peanuts. Every, every peanuts. Every time I, um, you know, Christmas rolls around or I'm looking for a gift, typically I, I always get my mom. Some I like think little- I may have just ruined the image of King David in my head. I'm going to pitch your pig peg from now. <laughs> Jeez. We should have a, have a so cartoonist what, to work on so that. So how many uh, Ash Wednesday services do you have? Is it a service? Do you do the drive-by Ash? So anywhere from like I've been in churches that have had seven. I've had I've been in churches wow. that, you know, have, you know, two or three. Mm-hmm. Um, do you ever go to a parish where they have the distribution of ashes outside of the liturgy? I've uh, I've only done that once, but it was in like a hospital setting and like, yeah. you know, stuff like that. But, um, what never, the, never, uh, in the church outside of the liturgy. I've seen, I've seen in the news churches that have like drive by ashing. Like they just have the priests outside in a line of cars and they just go boom. And they're Catholic. Yeah. Wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm just picturing like the priest throwing a bag of ashes and somebody like, whoop, hits him inside the head. No, it's kind of cool. You know, also like on TV, like if yeah. you watch a talk show or something, mm-hmm. like the there's a guy that has a talk show with sports. And Tony Reale. Yeah. Tony Reale. Uh, yeah, he I wears his. Him. And mm-hmm. you, know, you see people in the news. Oh, and it's and always they, so awkward. Like you'll see invariably every year there's going to be somebody on TV and they're going to be in the middle of the, uh, of, of the interview and they're going to be like, oh, by the way, did you know you got some stuff on your head? And like, <laughs> I'm Catholic. I, it happens every year. Yeah. I wait for it. I love it so much. And then the people are just mortified. They're like, oh, yeah, that's right. And And a total superficial appreciation is even as a kid, it was always like looking at your buddy like, I wonder what kind of shape he's going to have, like what kind of what kind of cross he's going to yeah. have. And like one of your buddies is, has this humongous cross on That's his super forehead. super dark and defined. Like super dark yeah. and defined. And then the other person smudge. is like it's kind of a smudge or it's like a, the fingerprint of the priest on the guy's forehead. You know? Now in Rome, they don't do the cross in the shape of the forehead. Well, well traditionally speaking, it, it should be going on top of the head, like yeah, at the sprinkled. crown. And what I love about that is that is precisely where the chrism anoints you, priest, prophet. Oh and king at baptism. And it, you know, it's meant to be, uh, anointed on the crown of the head. And, you know, when we sin and when we, when we're, (laughs) when we're driven in that carne, you know, in that, in in the flesh, you know, we're, we're defacing that reality, you know, and, and it's recognizing that. And it's like purifying that, throwing ash on that and really entering into a time of penance. So I actually, there's, there, if I have remnants of the ashes on my, on my, um, on my fingers, on your ash and thumb, on my ash and thumb, <laughs> I, I may, you know, make the cross or the smudge on the, on the forehead and then put a little bit of, uh, ashes on top of the head too. To and me, I, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to ask if my priest t- tomorrow can sprinkle me instead of, uh, give me the cross. I think that's more in line with, mm-hmm. with a penitential thing. And I think it's more in line with, uh, you know, when you fast, do not look somber and let people know it, but instead wash your face and mm-hmm. look cheerful. And I think 
I think, uh, at least for maybe most people with a more mature spirituality, that might be a better thing to do than getting, of getting your Catholic badge. Like, right. You're just all puffed out. Like, Ooh. look at my smudge. Look at my smudgy yeah. head. <laughs> look how good <laughs> I am. My ashes. Yeah. You look stupid <laughs> with your ashes. Well, I've, I had a woman go, yeah, you look, lick her finger oh. and then try to, try to, I'm like, no, 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 I'm no. good, I'm good, I'm good. No, he's so, like, he's like, hashtag Catholic. Hashtag, <laughs> hashtag, get it? So funny. what, uh, funny. Uh, funny. Yeah. so that, that, those ashes are burnt, um, when? What, well, what well where did the ashes come from? They, they should come from the palm fronds. Palm fronds. It's the palm fronds. What's fronds like the, from, uh, from Palm Sunday or Passion Sunday. Right. From the and year before. From the year before. And, you know, you collect those and, and burn them. With fronds like these, yeah. who needs an enemies? Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. He's on fire today. Ryan yeah. Shield is on fire. You sound like punny. I'm in a good mood. So many so puns. I, uh, I may have already started uh, celebrating <laughs> Fat Tuesday before we started recording this episode. Can't help yourself. <laughs> this is, this is, and this is soda. All mm. night long. This is this is Sheil all the time. It is. Yes. It's 11. Non-stop. Aren't you so blessed to have this in your life, guys? And yeah. We're blessed to have you in our life, brother. Thank you. Yeah. We love it. So Ash Wednesday, it begins Lent, right? Now, mm. that is a penitential season. Um, there's some practices that go along with the season of penitence. And there's some things that traditionally Catholics will do during the season um, to help prepare them for Easter, to help them... Uh, prepare for the second coming of Christ, not just Easter, but to really look forward to the second coming and and the resurrection of the dead. Originally, Lent was more focused on that than necessarily preparing for Easter as a season of penitence, looking forward to your own mortality. Mm-hmm. It's true. Yeah, it's like metanoia. Mm-hmm. Oh, nice. It's a season of word. metanoia. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, there's a lot of things that you can do in Lent. And I'm sure that in the comment sections of our social media pages, you can certainly give us what you guys normally do or what you're planning on doing. Yeah, one for thing this that Lent. people do a lot is they decide to give Shut something up off for social Lent. media. There's a lot of people that, that will yeah. put up like the ash, you know, the yeah. cross on off their, social media, off for social media for yeah. Lent. And I like that a lot. I, I think that's a really cool practice. But our listeners find something else to do. That way you can still, you know, watch the show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh man, I would love to just. Or if you, you know, if you are off of social media for Lent tomorrow, just go every Tuesday to (laughs) CatholicTalkShow.com. That way you can stay, you know, within the loving arms of other podcasts. (laughs) Don't give up podcasts. Speaking of giving stuff up, man, I I struggled for a while because I I would, you know, I'd go real hard at something. Like, and I'd find something that I was just, you know. He'd he'd give up breathing in 30 seconds and he'd pass (laughs) out. He's like, this is not going to (laughs) work. Yeah, you you could equivocate that. Yeah, yeah, Yeah. Yeah, it's true. What are some of the things you've given up before? Oh my goodness! I've given. Have you failed? Honestly, most of the time I give up alcohol. That's a non-negotiable. So that's that's always uh, something. Um, Sugar, candy. Well, you would never fit in with the Paul and her monks. And we're going to talk about that a little bit. But yeah, yeah, I know. That, which I'm really looking forward to that um, part of the show. But, you know, I, I've, I've done that. Um, I've employed different uh, reading materials where it's like I need to read a section of this mm-hmm. each day, um, you know, and work through a book or two. Because it's giving stuff up, but it's also adding. Adding things. Certain things, yeah. too. So when I would normally be watching, like catching up on my basketball or whatever, catching mm-hmm. up on the NBA, I w- I'll just wind up, you know, doing that and in, in place of it. Mm -hmm. Um, I try to shut off all secular forms of music, which I, as, as these guys know, no more rap rock for no more. Rap rock. Oh no. <laughs> what are you, oh no. But you know, these guys know I'm listening Korn's to music royalties from are going morning down. until night. And you know, for me to, to shift that and then only Christian music. And there was one that I just did no music at all. Um, for Lent, which was, which was pretty difficult, but also it, it developed a great sense of peace and, um, you know, steadiness in my spirit. So, you know, I think, I think those were some of the, the things that I've done in the past and the more austere and like crazy things were the times when I tried to like fast for 40 days that didn't, that didn't, that didn't last to, uh, talk about hanger, hangry, father hangry. (laughs) Yeah. I'm not very, yeah. I, 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 people know I'm fasting. (laughs) This isn't working. Yeah. You're not, you're not joyfully, you're getting getting your reward. So I did, I did once with father Golis and and when I, again, when I lived in DC and he was, uh, shout out to father Golis. Yeah. Yeah. Great guy. And, and he, we did, uh, meat and dairy because traditionally in their right, I think it's, it's not well, Marianne. No, something he, else. No, he is um, 
uh, he's a Syriac. Right. He's Syriac. Yeah. So they do this, right? And so I was yeah, like, yeah, the East, the East go way harder right. on length than we do. Right. So I, I was like, you, you know, and another thing too, and this is another tip is it does help to give things up with somebody to hold you accountable. And, and, you know, I'm, I have my spouse, but you know, mm-hmm. if you've got a friend or something and you want to get, and this is what father Golis and I gave up meat and dairy. Oh, and then we went to this French restaurant Easter Sunday and dude, I'm telling you, I had a steak and then whatever, mm-hmm. you know, cheese or whatever. Yeah, the milk steak. Man, it was steak st- boiled in milk. Stomach hurt so bad true. after that meal. I was like, it's oh, true. this was awful Easter, you know? And like, you got like one of those humongous ribbon that's like overflowing the plate. <laughs> yeah, dude, I, it, I, I should have like walked into that. I ran <laughs> into it and I was. <laughs> what are you guys two, giving up days. this year? This year, again, alcohol. I, I, I give that up every year. Um, and definitely want to get back to the practice of uh, praying my rosaries where the best times of my life, I prayed three rosaries, if not four rosaries in a day. And that's just such a special five trips yeah, around, man. Yeah, dude. Yeah. I used to have a, a rosary from Medjugorje that were all the mysteries of yep. the, the like, uh, that's rosary. like a, like a Franciscan rosary, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and it was, it had a little bit of the Terra from Medjugorje and stuff cool. in it. But I was on a, on a trip to Steubenville with the youth back in the day. Utes. And the Utes. And we were in the bus and we take off and they're just getting to know me. And I pull that rosary out of my pocket. And I'm like, we will begin the perpetual rosary <laughs> upon our path to Steubenville. And then I got the name Rosary Rick. <laughs> oh gosh, <laughs> Rick! But, but it's not a bad name. <laughs> I like that name, Rosary, Rosary Rick. Rick. Um, no, but, but you know, you should, in you all seriousness, snap that, like, uh, handle up on Twitter before someone takes it. I really want to. I really want to hold. I want to hold the Blessed Mother's hand this Lent, and um, you know, and kind of walk with her. How about you? Um, I think I'm going to try to give up dairy. I, I absolutely love dairy. Cheese. Should we do dairy? Should we do dairy together? That I'm means telling you, I'm telling you, your stomach. I'm just. It's good I'm for not you. Doing that. Yeah, I know it's good for you, but. Well, really? I'll, I'll do it if you'll do it. Well, I'll do alcohol. That's you know. I I I'll, I could do alcohol. Yeah, I could let's do. do alcohol. I'm, I'm, that, I'm already doing it. That's perfect. Well, yeah. me and you will take it a step further. We'll do <laughs> alcohol and dairy, and you can <laughs> not die on Easter <laughs> Sunday. Yeah, great. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll get. I'll be giving you guys a call. <laughs> yeah, how so, you doing? Now that's talking. We're talking about some food and some restrictions. Now there is some dietary restrictions that Catholics are that are meant to hold during Lent. Now Catholics You're obliged to it. Yes, they are. Okay. If you're 14 or older, you're obliged to practice these practices. Um, you're you're obliged to abstinence. If you're 18 to 58, you're obliged to fast and abstinence, unless there there's some mitigating things. If if you're uh, if you're pregnant, if you are a, a very physical worker who needs that nutrition, there's some there's some things that will yeah. allow you to not have to do that. Um, if you're on medication or if you have any sort of uh, health issues Illness, that would prevent yeah. that, mm-hmm. the church never wants to put you in danger mm-hmm. for these things. It's they're not Reasonable. they're made. Man isn't made for the practices. The practices are made for man and woman. So, but um, people get confused as to what you're allowed to eat and when you're allowed to eat, and it's pretty simple. So. Ash Wednesday and Good Friday are days of fasting and abstinence, which means you're supposed to eat. So abstinence means no meat, no chicken, no warm-blooded animals, right? You hot-blooded animal, you you, you can get out of your mind. Yes. Now, (laughs) so cold. (laughs) Now, fasting means you're supposed to have one modest meal and two smaller meals that when combined do not equal the size of your one modest meal and no mm-hmm. snacks in between. Mm-hmm. So that's how you're supposed to fast. So on Good Friday and Ash Wednesday, you're supposed to have those one small meal and two smaller meals that don't contain any meat or, or whatever. Um, and then on all Fridays, it's supposed to be abstinence. Nights it's Columbus supposed to be the Knights of Columbus fish fry. <laughs> I mean, right. who doesn't have one? Oh, yeah, let man. us know if That's you true. don't have one. Because, you know, what some, are you doing? There's like, some really hey, interesting dang. things, though, that... In, <laughs> what are you doing? Like, do we, eh? In certain areas, there's some really interesting things that people are allowed to eat that we would consider meat, but they have a... Um, 
they have an indulgence to be able to eat. So there's things like some cultures can eat penguins. Yeah. Alligators. Alligators and muskrat. crocodiles and muskrats, muskrats. and capybaras. We did a show on we that. Did do a show yeah. on this. That was the, on the episode where we talked about crazy Catholic rules. But oh, yeah. Yeah, there's, there's some dispensations based on cultures that uh, they would consider an animal, even if it was warm-blooded who lived in an aquatic environment, they would consider it uh, a fish. Mm-hmm. <laughs> because those crazy bishops and their science. <laughs> science. Science. They're so good at science. So those are those are the basic rules of, of how you're supposed to eat during Lent. It's there you go. No meat on Fridays. And then on Ash Wednesday and Good, good Friday... Friday no meat and those small meals. And you can take it a little bit further like Father uh, Hangry over here <laughs> and just go all out, no food. Uh, or do like a bread and a bread and water fest. Yeah. Which is a big uh, a big practice for many, many years. It's biblical. Very mm-hmm. biblical. It's in the Bible. Now it's in also, the Bible. Read it. <laughs> now also during the season, you have your Easter duty. You're supposed to at least get confession once during Lent mm. and receive communion once we get to Easter. So those are some other things. Now... Catholics are also called to <laughs> almsgiving, to fasting, and prayer. 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 Yeah. See, I'm I'm gonna my prayer side of things, I'm gonna go to Matt. I'm gonna look at this kind of like a counter. Like during the week, I want to go to mass or adoration, mm-hmm. you know, three, four, five times, something like that. I'll pick yeah. something out. I got one day to figure that out. For my for my almsgiving, I wanna I wanna set up a, a plan of giving for uh, Mike Nixon's parish, Father Mike Nixon in yeah. Panama yeah. City. Yeah. Because currently, I mean, he's he's under a huge hole. Everybody got really? like an extra two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah. send it to him. Father Nixon's a great priest. He's he does a great some really priest. great work. He he does uh, Catholic in America. Mm-hmm. That the channel. He also does a, a series called Made for Glory. That uh, uh, it's with yeah. out of really great, excellent. And his um his production studio was completely destroyed. His mm-hmm. parish was all messed up in the hurricane. So yeah. I'll put a link to that. So if you guys are looking for an opportunity for almsgiving, good idea. Please consider uh, donating to Father Nixon and, and the reconstruction there. And certainly pray for him. Like stop for a moment after this podcast or even pause it uh, to pray for his efforts along with Father Luke because. It's been a heavy burden, you know, yeah. to, but they're doing it, man, and, and they're championing it. And I tell Mike all the time, I'm like, dude, you're such an inspiration to me, brother. And I can't imagine God placing a better priest oh, yeah. in a parish that had to go through a hurricane destruction of the entire city. It was bad. And it's like there was such an immediate response of charity that was touching and moving and, and it was there, but now, you know, it settles after a while and it's like, okay, this is the new normal and people have to put their lives back together again. And the parishioners who once built the beautiful church that was St. Dominic's, you know, they've got to rebuild their own homes. It's a marathon. So to have like a capital campaign in your parish, in your parish boundaries with people whose lives have been destroyed, they won't have that extra income to Mm -hmm. be able to throw at the church to build it. So if you, if you do find it in your, heart to support this way of almsgiving collectively we will be able to provide that uh you know link and and you know let's support them that would be a good thing to do yeah absolutely thank so, you yeah so some other things now that you that we don't do during lent liturgically what are a couple words that liturgical we don't- dancing well, you should never do that. that out. There is no good time and no season for liturgical dancing. Oh, I don't dancing. want to get this guy started. Did unless, you eat anything? No, unless no, you are, no, maybe he's hangry. Do I know I should have never. Now, I poked the bear, dude. Look, I poked if you're, the bear. If you're in a parish in Africa and liturgical dancing is something that is organic to your culture, it is a beautiful and I'm amazing be expression. But if you are white folk in <laughs> suburban Chicago and you're dancing around with no, you know, shoes on, prancing around. Stop. Stop it. Just stop it. Take it up for it's, Lent. Give it up for give Lent. It up for Please. Lent. <laughs> give it up for Lent. For the love of oh. But during the liturgy, there's a couple words that we don't say. What are those? No. Alleluia. Alleluia. Yeah, get them all out. Get them out of your body. Alleluia. Or, or glory. Gloria. Glory to God in the highest. Glory. Glory. In excelsis Gloria. In excelsis Dei. Hey, oh, oh. Hey. get it out of your oh. system. Yeah, okay. because tomorrow there'll be no more of that. <laughs> get it out of your and system. And why is that? Ah, <sighs> Because it's this anticipation of the revealed glory of Jesus risen from the tomb. 
that we cry out, hallelujah, man, like hallelujah. It was his victory over the flesh. Hallelujah. You know, and, and it's, it's that anticipation of entering back into the desert, this, this kind of journey into that aridity and nothingness and recognizing I am ashes and I'm, I'm, I am in my trajectory toward death, you know, and realizing that in that midst, in the midst of that desert, in the midst of that place, where it's like your faith is being reborn and your baptism is being renewed. And you think about, you know, that journey to get there. It should be a journey. It should be exhausting. And it's bringing into clearer focus who the person of Jesus Christ is in human history, but even more importantly, in your history. Who is Jesus going to be in the midst of the desert for you as you are overcoming temptation and turning from sin and putting on this way of life of prayer, fasting and almsgiving and living out the season so that Christ may truly bring your heart into a greater transformation and increase within you the theological virtues of faith, hope and love? Yeah, you know, you touched on something that I wanted to talk about in this episode. You talked about Christ in the desert. Mm -hmm. Lent is how many days? It's 40 days. And that calls to mind a lot of the, in the Bible. There's a lot of um, <clears throat> a lot of. Does that include Sundays? Well, so here's here. Ooh. Okay, is Ooh. this the inquisition? It does not mm -hmm. because Ash Wednesday to Holy Thursday is 46 days, but there's going to be six Sundays. Mm -hmm. So the the time period between there is 46 days, but Sundays are not included in Lent. Now there's debate. Are you free from your Lenten vows and the things that you gave up during Lent on Sundays? When and you, the feast of St. Joseph, yeah. which is my feast day. It's a solemnity. Mm -hmm. So you feast. Right. Uh, but what if you can't? But I can't, I can't do can that you, personally. Can you, have, can you have alcohol on Sundays during Lent if you gave it up? I personally can't because I have done that before. And guess what happened to my Lenten practice? Drink out, the out the window. Out the window. Yeah, you, you fire it, it go, Yeah, once, own. once, it, it's like. Uh, do you think that's illicit practice per, though? Or just not? I mean, no, I know it's not really governed, but. I think, How do you feel about that? Well, I, I, I would lean on St. Augustine for that because... Perfect abstinence is easier than perfect moderation. Yeah. 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 And it, but it doesn't say that we don't have the capacity for greater virtue and greater discipline. And that's ultimately where we want to go. So I think the greatest effort would be to feast on... You know, the Annunciation, the Solemnity of St. Joseph, you know, St. Pat's Day. Yeah. Um, you know, to have these festivities even on the Sundays, right? Because well, it, we sell it, we, do, we always kind of have a conception. Oh, a Solemnity is like, yeah, Christmas, feast Easter, days. Feast Day. Every but no, Sunday. Like every Sunday is a Solemnity. Every Sunday is a Feast Day. Mm -hmm. Every Sunday is a Feast Day. And Catholics, we're obligated to, to feast. feast. <laughs> to feast. Mm. To sing, to dance, to be merry, to eat, and and, and to have fellowship with one another. Even during Lent. And that's why Lent is 40 days and not 46. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, those 40 days, they, that calls to mind the 40 years wandering in the desert, the 40 days that our Lord spent um, in the desert. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of times where the number 40 comes up with, uh, with um, fasting and with penitence. Mm -hmm. And that's where that, that in Latin, it's called... Uh, Septa Juessima or whatever, there's 40 days, right? Mm -hmm. um, and that 40 days is a very important, uh, it calls to mind a lot of the our forefathers and the things that they've done, and then our Lord himself in his preparation for his ministry. The desert. Those are readings too are in the, in, in Lent. during that time we read, we read those. Yeah. For sure. Now, I, I love Lent. Lent really is one of my favorite things. Now, you guys talked about fish fries, right? Mm hmm I think one of the traditions that has come up in the last 50 years is really, really embracing that fish fry culture. But I don't think there's a single Catholic listening who observes that, that Lenten practices, who hasn't on a Friday found themselves having the most ubiquitous form of fish in the United States. filet fish <laughs> filet fish Now, boys, oh, here we I, go. I went out before the episode. Oh, look at you. And I got you a little treat. Mickey D's. Mickey D's. A filet of oh, thank fish. You. Dude, I don't know when this the last time I had McDonald's. <laughs> and I don't know if I've ever actually had a filet of fish. You've never had a filet of fish. I don't think I have. And you call yourself a Catholic priest. Know, isn't that a shame? I know. So, the filet of fish is... This is... <laughs> Look at the thing, dude. <laughs> oh, look at that. How many of you guys, uh, who loves a filet of fish out there? If you're Catholic, this is a Friday staple. 
Well, we're going to find out. The buns are always different on filet fish. Yeah. Have you ever noticed They that? steam the buns. That, they're yeah. different. Yeah. It's weird. These right, are the see. only buns they steam? Yeah. All right. Let's see. Let's see, Father Rich. You dig in. Now, you start right. eating, and I'll tell you something very interesting. Okay. The filet of fish was invented by McDonald's, and it is a Catholic origin. Mm. No? Mm. So... Somebody invented it? Yeah. No. So <laughs> somebody invented this. What I'm eating right now. Right. So <laughs> there was there was a there was a restaurateur, a McDonald's franchise owner, and he was in Ohio, uh, my great Buckeye State. Mm-hmm. And during Lent, his receipts were going down because 85% of the population it, where his McDonald's was was Catholic. And no one would come in on Fridays. So he was losing a seventh of his income every week. So um, Lou Groen, Lou Groen in the Cincinnati area. What are you thinking about this right now? I just see where he's going with it. Lou Groen, a, an owner. I'm in thinking the area. like the filet of fish. Um, I'm not a big fan, dude. You're not? It's not that great. Yeah. It's, not that great. Yeah, it's all right. Yeah, it's, all right. <laughs> it's not a KSC Fish fry. No. So they were losing money every week on Fridays during Lent. And he said, we need to do something. So he went and he invented the filet of fish. And he went all the way to Chicago to present the idea to Ray Kroc, the, the person who really made McDonald's go. And Ray Kroc did not like the idea. He said, you always come here with a bunch of crap growing. I don't want my restaurant smelling like a, like a fish, right? And what Ray Kroc said is, well, here's what I'd rather you do. We're going to have a We're going to have a challenge. I'm going to come up with a sandwich I think that we should serve to Catholics on Friday in Lent, and you serve yours. So on Good Friday in 1962, Hmm. they had a challenge. One was the Hula Burger, and it was a hamburger, but instead of meat, it was a pineapple ring. Who came up with that, Ray? Ray Kroc. Good old Ray. Ray, Ray. Ray, Ray, Ray. Then then he said, but then we can challenge it against the filet of fish. And whoever, whichever one orders more, we are going to start putting on the menu on Fridays during Lent to satisfy all these Catholics who won't come here. Isn't a Hawaiian burger meat, though? No, it's a pineapple ring instead of meat. Oh. So the final score. Bull ring. The That's final right. score of the orders on Good Friday of Catholics in 1962, six people ordered the hula burger. 350 ordered the filet of fish. Wow. That's emphatic. Mm-hmm. Ray, Ray, can you accept defeat? <laughs> you so, lost Ray. <laughs> so the first time, uh, so yeah, if we from any there, French fries in there? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> now give that him, I like. Give him an inch, he takes a mile. Yeah. <laughs> so in the first month, the filet of fish sold over 3,000 sandwiches. It went on, and that just became for every McDonald's in the country. But because of the demand of Catholics during Lent, That's a cool story. everybody yeah. has to have. Every McDonald's has filet of fishes. Take your bite. All right, I'm going to do it. Yeah, you guys. Drum roll, please. You guys talk about something else. You guys talk about KFC. Glory to God in the highest. Dude, you've got a whole bunch of mayo all over that beard, that mighty beard of Zeus. Sweet beard of Zeus, man. You've got mayonnaise on there. <coughs> but uh, KFC Glad fish fries over. and. Um, <laughs> Um, the, yeah, I think I prefer Knights of Columbus. So to all of my knights out there, man, thank you so much for putting on those fish fries because this is way better than the filet of fish. Yeah. These are amazing. I don't know, buddy. I like uh, the VFW. I think you have fry. the sentimental values of uh, Ohio. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it started in Ohio. Yeah, Ohio, the land of presidents, the first in flight, and the birthplace of the filet of fish. Well, that's. Uh, I'm not going to challenge the be first a museum flight, about that. There is. There isn't. There isn't. <laughs> so, there is. Int. Int. There is. Int. All right. So, I think the consensus that the filet fish was just okay, meh at best. <laughs> but here's something that I think that everyone in this room, knowing us guys, can get behind to do for Lent. And that is the 40 day beer only Catholic fast. Nothing besides beer for 40 days. Hmm. I don't know, man. I'd be a wreck. Ugh. I'd be a wreck. I feel bloated already. Yeah. I'm a wreck after a two-day only beer fast. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, it's like, hey, there's Ryan again. (laughs) (laughs) He's coming in for breakfast. (laughs) (laughs) The guy's like, the guy behind the bar is like, 
dude, you, you doing okay? <laughs> yeah, you, you depressed? No, I'm, I'm observing my Lenten <laughs> fast. You wanna, you, <laughs> hey, Catholic, why the long face? Oh, gosh. So no, in the early 1600s, <laughs> there were the Polliner Friars, and they lived in Bavaria. And one of their things was they already had in their order a year-round Lent. That was one of their charisms. Hmm. So they observed what everyone else did during Lent the entire year. So they said, well, since we're already doing a year-round Lent, we need to do something extra. We need to take it to another step during the actual 40 days of Lent. Um, So they were brewers, and they were making beer. And they came up with something. They're like, here's the idea. Let's make a beer that is so malty and so nutritious that we can have only that. Mm. And they called it liquid bread. Hmm. And that is a, a doppelback beer. Doppelback. Mm. Doppelback. I've had a doppelback before. Yeah, they're good. Yeah, they are. Too. They are good. So the so idea these guys was, are all like getting in fights. And, oh, yeah. You know, <laughs> no. <laughs> their, their Lenten observance was like pretty impressive. The way that I think the, I'd be, ha- I'd, I'd rather be hangry than like, you know, Brother hammered John, for 40 I never days. knew you like, felt that way about me. I got in a fist fight every night of Lent. <laughs> Fair Jack, you don't even know me. You don't even know. You know what? No, I'm kidding. I love you. I love you. Uh, uh, sorry, sorry, baby. No. So this, this beer was really specifically brewed to be very nutritious but very low in alcohol. It's probably like two and a half percent alcohol at the very most, but it was very caloric, very rich in nutrients, and it was able to sustain them for 40 days. Now, they wanted to make sure that their practice was licit. So they were going to petition the Pope and say, Holy Father, are we allowed to do this practice? So they got together a barrel of beer and they put it on their cart, and they're coming all the way from Bavaria, and they're taking it all the way down to Rome, hmm. right? Well, as it Very happens, true. as it happens, it had been an extraordinarily and unseasonably hot time of year, and this trip took longer than they planned, and the beer got skunky. Mm. It was no good. Stanky legs. S- stanky beer. It Oof. was stank, stank. So they, they put some stank on it. So they they went over the Alps. They went through the entire Italian peninsula, and they get down there, and they say, Holy Father, try our beer and say, is this okay for us to live on for 40 days? Well, the beer sucked because it was ruined. And the beer, the the Pope took a sip of it, and he's like, this, you guys, okay, number one, you guys suck at brewing because this is terrible beer. But because it's terrible, I'm going to allow you to do it. But the beer back home was still fresh, right? It had the born on date. And they were able to drink it. So that's why the Pope allowed them because he thought the beer was terrible. But it was just because it was skunked from going through all of Italy and the Alps. (laughs) He's like, this is penance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are you sure you want to do this? So it's a cool story. Yeah. So that, that, that cloister is no longer there, but there is still to this day, a a brewer there. And like, if you've ever seen Pauliner beers, Mm -hmm. yeah, that's the same kind of beer that, that type of beer and that tradition lives on in those. That's cool. Yeah. So. Well, one beer that I'm looking forward to is a beer for St. Patty's Day, yeah. which I always do. Yeah, that's coming and up. Then, yeah, and then, yeah. Even I, when you give up alcohol. Even when I give up alcohol, I, I have my corned beef and cabbage and my beer. Mm-hmm. Um, at the seminary, we actually celebrated because St. Joseph's and St. Patrick's are so close together. Right. We would celebrate what was called a Joe Patty Festival. Joe Patty. Joe Patty. Yeah. Um, Basso, you know, Monsignor yeah, Basso yeah. put that on. Big shout out to Monsignor Basso. Love that guy. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I was at the seminary when we first put it on and and um, it was a great celebration. Yeah. yeah. So I'm looking forward to that. And, and I'm sure that you guys are looking forward to this Lent, not mainly for those, just those feast days and solemnities, you know, those little respites, but to truly put on the practices of prayer, fasting, and almsgiving, because this is what boils down to who we truly are. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. We remember our mortality and we remember the capacity of our humanity for greatness and our communion with Christ, who is redeeming us actively in the celebration of our faith. So as we move through the season of Lent, continue to journey with us. We thank you so much for subscribing on all of our platforms, most especially CatholicTalkShow.com. 
YouTube, iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, all of those, and especially on social media, you know, Twitter and Instagram and Facebook. We definitely love the fellowship. And if there's a patron out there or two, you want to continue to support what we're doing and you appreciate it, well, we would appreciate if you really support us financially, because that's the only way that we can help this show grow and keep on, you know, doing this thing that we love to do with you guys. So make sure that you go to patreon.com forward slash Catholic talk show. And I want to remind everyone, I'm going to put a link in there so that that did you could consider helping uh, Father Nixon and, and that St. Dominic yeah. Parish that we talked about earlier. Uh, it'd be a really good thing. And he's a great priest, a great community, really in need. Mm-hmm. And we'd really, uh, we'd ask you and appreciate you to consider doing that. Please do. Thank you. Yep. Ciao. All right, boys. Well, let's go, uh, let's go fatten it up. And then, <laughs> and then after that, let's go get our cords so we can start whipping ourselves. For the next <laughs> days. And, and purging ourselves of our concupiscence. <laughs> <laughs> All right, boys. God bless you Let's guys. Let's go see if we can get some beads. And uh, hey, you know, have a little bit of moderation tonight. Don't go too crazy, right? <laughs> Poonchkeys for life. <laughs> Peace.